Okay. I'm going to try an experiment to simulate the cylinder or what takes place in the cylinder with dissimilar materials and um, this water-based glycol fluid. So right now we've got how to save 273. As you can see, if I don't move the um, meter, I've got zero voltage reading across the meter right now. I've got a bronze insert that would simulate maybe the piston or anything else that's on the piston or cylinder rod and then carbon steel sleeve. Um, I hope I've got the bottom sealed so that it doesn't pour out. But I'm going to take the electrodes right now, contact the bronze, if you can look at the meter, contact the steel and hold it there to see if anything happens. So I got zero voltage going across the units. Nothing's in there right now, it's completely empty. So let me verify and show you. The inside is completely vacant and empty. So this would be the sleeve and then this would be the rod. Okay. I'm going to take the aerophon and fill the annulus up like it would be in the cylinder. It is starting to leak in some areas, so I don't know how much time I have before this runs out. So I'll give it a moment. It's starting to leak, so I need to check something on it pretty quick. So I'm going to run the terminals across here, and I'm getting a 0.08 voltage across there. So there is voltage that is drawing, it's pushing between the iron and the, um, the bronze. If I reverse polarity, let's see if the current bursts, and it does. So we're at 69 volts or 0.069 volts drawn across there. It's positive. If I switch these, I get a negative reading. So the dissimilar materials between carbon steel and bronze on a cylinder with water-based glycol had to save 273 does in fact create a battery effect and has a voltage across the components. And there you have it.